So I got to see the premiere, and uh, I really enjoyed uh, just just the whole new world that this has really set up. I mean, the, the stakes are really bigger than ever because you're really trying to create a whole new country. I mean, is there is there something kind of refreshing about that, about that you're just not, you're actually fighting for something, an ideal, instead of just survival? Yeah, well, that was one of the things I hoped that the storytelling would eventually get around to, and to a certain extent, it's a little premature because we still have a war to win. But I always thought it'd be very interesting to get into the notion of what it would be like to rebuild the country and to have the character that started off as an American history professor become one of the architects of the next civilization, become one of the next founding fathers and uh, craft the next Declaration of Independence and Bill of Rights. And what we would have taken from the previous era and what we would have discarded as being superfluous or even counterproductive. So I was, I was really curious about this uh, this whole new mold development, and I'm curious. Um, I, I've always seen the premiere. I haven't I haven't gone any farther after that. So I'm curious how it does this does this mold play out throughout the entire season, or is it solved kind of fairly quickly without giving too much away? No, there's two big themes this season. That I mean, we threw a lot of stuff into play right off the bat, which I was a little nervous oh, yeah. about doing, but it's somehow it, it actually ended up working well, where we throw a lot at the screen and then kind of unravel it as the season unfolds. And the two big dominant themes of the year are these new allies, the Volm, can they be trusted? Uh, are, are we throwing off the yoke of one oppressor only to adopt potentially the yoke of another? And the second is the Mole storyline, which gets uh, more and more intense as the, as the season unfolds and everybody's suspicions and paranoia about who it might be really intensifies. Um, that becomes another dominant story point. It's cool too because it adds this kind of like who done it like mystery thing, and everyone has their suspects, and uh, it'll be interesting to see like who who kind of emerges. It will surprise you. It will surprise you. It's not the obvious choices. Fantastic, fantastic. So I was also curious about um, about the the woman himself and and bringing Doug Jones on. Um, it was it was it was such a great choice. He brings such kind of gravitas to that role. And I mean, it, it seems that there's also I mean, people uh, there's there's many including Weaver that just don't trust him. I mean, how how far do we get into like their actual like motivations be besides what they actually have just been telling us? Quite a bit. We learn a lot about their backstory and their mythology, and and it really opens up the storytelling to um, to being almost a galactic perspective. Uh, it's really interesting how they fit into the mythology. And you're right, Doug Jones is a wonderful addition to our cast. Uh, I really can't say enough about his talent. He's able to convey the most subtle forms of expression and emotion through 18 layers of latex, and I don't know quite how he does it, but he's just masterful to watch. Nice, nice. So with, um, with, with Tom as president, I mean, it seems like the, the, his, his, the kids are all kind of going off on their own path, and some of them might not be the best paths to go on. Like, is there, is there a level of kind of separation that kind of furthers throughout the season between, between Tom and the kids? Uh, since yes and no. Place? I mean, this is certainly the most fragmented that we've seen the Mason clan thus far, and it, it's a direct result of two factors. One is that Tom's got more responsibility than he's ever had before being the newly elected president in the United States. And also, for the last couple of years, these boys have been clamoring for some autonomy and independence away from their father. They really do want to establish themselves as men and as soldiers in their own right. And so this is the year where Tom says pretty much, you want it, you got it. Don't come crying to daddy if it doesn't work out. I'm busy. <laughs> and so they do go off on their own and do have to sort of sink or swim um, but there's a moment that comes in, during the season where I think they all collectively realize that they work better as a unit together, as a family unit, and uh, and and sort of congeal again. I also I really like the uh, the Pope Town set. That that seems <laughs> like uh, it seems like quite an awesome place to uh, to visit. So is there how much how much do we spend in Pope Town, and how kind of I guess how separated from from Charleston is Pope really? I mean, he seems like he's he doesn't want to be there, and he wants to be there at the same time. Well, I, I can only answer that question through my character's perspective, who doesn't have a lot of nice things to say about Pope. <laughs> of course. Uh, you know, to me, Pope's an opportunist. He 
He's a bit of a coward. He's a bit of a blowhard. He talks a good game about leaving and wanting to be an independent renegade, but at the same time, he never quite leaves. And now that he's got his own fiefdom over there in Pope Town, he's got some investment for the first time, so he's got something to lose, which makes him an interesting, it adds another dimension to his character, which is kind of fascinating. Uh, but the way it works is that Charleston, although we are rebuilding up top and starting to rehabilitate some of the buildings that have been destroyed to move people into them, predominantly is a subterranean world. And Pope has built his, his, uh, his kingdom up top. And it's sort of the Sin City. It's where you go, you know, to uh, find a bottle or a woman or whatever it is you want. <laughs> nice, nice. Now, I was curious, like, the, I also read that there's, there's going to be, uh, Stephen Collins is coming on as, as the, the former president of the United States, like your, your predecessor, essentially. So I was curious, like, how, how much we see him this season and what that dynamic really does to the show. Well, it does a couple of things. You know, we left Tom last season pretty much turning down the presidency, and then we start the season off with him, the newly elected president. So um, the way I rationalized that change of fart was that he understands the necessity for there to be some kind of pageantry, some kind of ritual in place to keep the people of Charleston calm, that he feels they need a figurehead, and he's willing to play that part. But he really is playing the part. He's not being the president. He's acting like the president. And when he finds out that the, the actual president is still alive, it takes a lot of the pressure off. He can go back to feeling like, uh, like a rebel leader and uh, like a mayor of a small town as opposed to having the responsibility of the entire country on his shoulders. And having Stephen come and play with us was tremendous. I've been a fan of his forever, and he was great. I and mean, In fact, we brought on a lot of really interesting players this year, which I think really rounded out the ensemble nicely. We got Doug Jones, we've got Gloria Rubin, my old ER compatriot. We've got Robert Sean Leonard from House. We've got Matt Frewer, who a lot of people remember as Max Headroom back in the old days. Terry O'Quinn came back and did a couple. Um, yeah, we have a really nice ensemble this year. Nice, nice. So is there, is there anything, is there anything you say about, I guess, the how the season is like formatted and like is there any desire to, to I guess, go longer or go bigger as far as like your episode count. I know mean, you have, you've had 10 for the last three seasons now. Is there any desire to expand that and go beyond 10 and maybe like 13 or 15? Well, we've talked about it. I think we could do, we could do 12. We could probably do, we could maybe do 14. This is a tough show to do. And, uh, you know, we're stretched pretty thin to do the 10 that we do do. Um, the other problem is that it takes a long time to do our post on these because there's so many effects and, and uh, graphics that need to be rendered that we're just barely finishing these and locking these before we go on the air. So we really do need six months just to finish the 10. I think if we got into a larger order, we'd be hard-pressed to keep on our same production schedule. Um, and there's something really nice about knowing where you're going to finish the season before you even start. And I don't know that the writers would be able to do that if we amped it up too much more. Uh, great. Well, that's all I have. Uh, thanks so much, Tom. It was great talking to you. Likewise. Thank you very much.